Hello everybody, welcome back to Spain. Final episode of the week and today's game is against Valencia. It's a battle of the teams in false positions, at least that's what my mind is telling me. Valencia are currently in 19th place in the league. It's, uh, I, I can't make head or tail of it. They're a better team than that, at least I thought so. Meanwhile, we are in 7th place, coming off the back of a 1-1 draw. which I'll just bring up here for you, against Getafe. Uh, we actually took uh, a bit of a, a trouncing in the first 15 minutes, and they went ahead thanks to an absolute pile driver from one of their midfielders. Basically, we didn't defend well enough, it came loose. Just on the edge of the box, he took one touch and then buried it with his left foot into the roof of the net. And uh, then we went up the other end about half an hour later, and Berg managed to get the equaliser thanks to a nice little through ball from uh, Victor Malejo. So uh, that's how it ended, 1-1. One, one. We've also confirmed a contract extension for Bonaventura. So uh, now we only have Berg and Yarmolenko Yama, left to confirm contracts with. The only other player to uh, have their contract expiring this year is Rui Silva. Uh, frankly, if he leaves, fine. We can always just replace him with somebody from the youth team. Uh, as far as who's going to be playing today, it's going to be Longo and... Actually, is it going to be Longo? Yeah, Longo can come onto the bench for Berg, who is not in the best of form today. So he can uh, sit this one out. Uh, Manu Barrero is going to be... Starting the game for us at centre forward with Momo and Victor Malejo either side of him. Bonaventura with the brand new contract and Shibazaki behind him. William Arau coming into the side for Galopo. And then a unchanged defence of Rene, Javi Montero, Peru and Arbia with Danny Jimenez in goal. Let's get going. Let's see what we can do with this particular team. Uh, Valencia at home for anybody, despite their position in the league, is going to be a difficult. Uh, it, it's going to put up. They're going to put up a lot of uh, fight. Is basically what I'm trying to say. It's getting very, very late here. So let's see what we can do. I would be happy to take three points. I'd be very happy to take three points away today. But it is the away game. And we've showed before that even against the bottom teams in our leagues, we do somehow manage to always find a way to lose a game. So hopefully we'll play better today. We won't give them the uh, the lead, which is something that we've done in a few matches so far this season, is giving away early leads. And uh, we'll just see how we uh, how we find our way into this game. Carlos Soler back to Juan Jesus. Nice crossfield ball to Gaia. And Tony Lato back to Gaia again. Albia wins the ball. Thought we might get a foul given against us there, but no, the referee has decided it was a fair enough challenge. I uh, wondered if he was offside, and indeed he was. Only by a hair, though. But offside is offside, and it's a free kick, which is going to be taken by Thiago Sarr. Leo looking to get the inside run on the full back, can't quite manage it. Rene, massively out of position here. Could that cost us as they play a ball down the left-hand side of our defence? Montero comes across. Naturally a left-footer anyway. Momo, cross into the box. is too close to the goalkeeper. 
Really has to cut that back more if he's going to have any effect with that particular ball. Peru wins the header, but it falls to Carlos Soler. Jorge Maya gets around one, gets around two, goes for the cross. But fortunately, the captain gets his body in the way of the ball. It will be a throw in instead. Oh, it's taken the deflection and it's gone in. How unlucky can you get? I'm putting no blame on Danny Jimenez whatsoever. It's just one of those freak occurrences. He did his best to try and save what he thought was a shot on target. It just comes back off the crossbar, catches his leg and bounces in. Really, really unfortunate for him. And as I said, absolutely no blame from me. It's just one of those things. Unfortunately, it will go down as an own goal. So we restart and immediately give the ball away again. Normally quite comfortable facing shots from distance, but when they take deflections like that, there's not much you can really do. again Malejo just beaten to the ball oh and he's in here Sand luckily the goalkeeper was alive to the possibility and came rushing out and here's Bonaventura on a brand new contract can he make something happen in the midfield area well he's managed to get us into a position where we can win a free kick We do have some very good free kick takers in this side. So this has to go down as a chance. Pereiro winning the free kick. Oh, off the crossbar. Probably a bit too much curl on it to beat the goalkeeper in honesty. That's a nice ball through to Malejo. Pulled back. Surely, yes, it's a goal. Pereiro with the equaliser. No dodgy dancing for that man. Just sticks his hand in the air. Excellent pass by Malejo. He knew exactly where to put it to cause the maximum danger. And Barrero was alive and willing to make the run to put a finish on the end of that ball. Stop by Jimenez. Well, 
Malejo. Well, it was speculative. Dare I say, overly optimistic of him. But he does well to turn his man, gets himself into some space and thinks, I'll have a crack. But just as he's about to, he loses his balance. And that's what ultimately causes the ball to shank as wide as it does. Katabak, what a name. Good defensive effort by Bonaventura. Not the most defensively minded of players. He does get his foot in when he needs to. Which is lovely to see. Run through the middle. Barrero's onside. Oh, it's a good save by the goalkeeper. He did the right thing, Barrero. Opened up his body. He tried to bend it around the goalkeeper. He probably could have tried burying it with pace into the bottom corner. On the near post. But uh, no, I think, again, he did the right thing. And at half-time, it's all square here. good from Rene just getting yourself back into those defensive areas to try and at least cause problems for the player that you're marking Barbia cross into the box deflected out for a corner That's an important interception by Javi Montero. Malejo. It's in. Victor Malejo. He's done it again. And Deportivo have once again turned a deficit into a winning position. 56 minutes gone. Valencia won. Deportivo 2, it's a great move look at the run by the right wing forward, he knew exactly where he was going and the midfielder held on to the ball for the perfect amount of time played it through with just the right amount of pace, one touch on his left to set it and then just put it past the despairing hand of the goalkeeper and there's the dad dancing once again That's good from Barrero. Momo. Couldn't quite control the ball well enough. He was always struggling after that heavy first touch. Ventura losing out there. A little bit of physicality by the Valencia player. Didn't like it.
they've done this down this right hand side Catter back if he finds a good ball this could be dangerous cuts back one too many times really cross into the box RB is beaten goalkeeper is not let's look to make some changes just keep things fresh Le Goff can come on for Rene defensive security at left back now Momo can make way for let's put Morales on Not the best pass in the world, but we did get away with it. Manu Guerrero not blessed with lightning pace. He was always going to struggle to catch up with that. thinking about that let's make sure that we give Longo some game time that's a foul surely referee doesn't give anything though Gaia near post it's gone in They won the ball under questionable circumstances, but what they did with it afterwards was nothing but superb. Loads of space out on the wing there, and the man completely unmarked at the near post. And when you give a man that kind of room, he's going to do that to you. Excellent header. Immediately we give the possession back to them yet again. Malejo is going to do his best to chase it down here. There's only so much even he can do. He's in behind the defence here. This could be dangerous. Taking a deflection. And it's gone wide. as though Valencia may walk away with a point tonight. To be honest, it's probably more than they deserve. A speculative opening effort which ricocheted off of a defender before, fortunately for Valencia, finding its way in off of the calves of the goalkeeper. Their second goal of the evening was born of defensive inadequacy by their opponents really and also you have to say there was more than a hint of a foul in the build up and there it is final whistle goes it's two all here not the best performance to round off a week especially given the relative positions of the two teams in the league but it is still very early and I don't think anyone genuinely expects Valencia's poor form to continue into the second half of the season there's that first goal which really was very unfortunate no blame going to be finding its way towards the goalkeeper there surely 
it's just a shame that two very nicely worked goals for Deportivo are cancelled out by some pretty shoddy defending and a questionable decision by the referee to allow play to continue after what looked like a cast iron foul. Despite the result, Victor Malejo getting the Man of the Match award. Manu Barrero getting a 7.5 as well. He seems to be finally coming good for this team after what has been a not-so-great start. Uh, Peru Norlaskain, I can never say that name correctly, really falling short of what's expected of him, only getting a 4 during this match. And uh, to be fair, he was responsible for the second goal, leaving a hole in that side of the defence for the man to ghost in. So how's that leave the league table? Well, we'll find out in two seconds after we have a look at the other scores. Real Madrid back in winning ways, beating Malaga two goals to nil. Barcelona drawing with Real Sociedad and Atletico Madrid beating Ibar 1-0. I fully expect that means that Atletico Madrid is still top of the table. Indeed, they are. Barcelona are closing the gap on them, though. They're three points behind at this stage, so they've put their early, early season form behind them and are now looking every bit the team that they should do. Also looking for Real Madrid, we can see they have now moved up to 10th place in the league. So their form is starting to get back to what it needs to be as well. And Deportivo have dropped down to ninth place now on 13 points. Still only three points separate them from third place. So ninth is no disgrace, certainly for a team who were only promoted this season. Well, that's going to do us for another episode until Monday when hopefully we'll have a little bit more news on uh, our non-contracted or, or soon-to-be non-contracted uh, players. Uh, I think when we come back on Monday, it's fairly obvious the game that we're going to be playing because if you look at the, uh, the bottom of your screen there, you'll see on the 31st of October 2027, Deportivo La Coruña will be playing host to Barcelona in La Liga. It's going to be a big game. I hope you can join me for it. Until then, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.